Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and this is Board Game Inquisition, where I try to give you insights and information about the board games you might just want to have in your own collection someday. So as my lovely friend Bez suggested, I'm going to start at the end, where I say Okazaki Inc. is a very well put together and thoughtful wallet game, but I'm not sure it's one for me. And if you'd like to find out why, then here's five things I think you need to know about Okazaki Inc. Okazakai Inc. is a game about recreating a sequence of DNA. You start with a handful of cards. And their orientation really matters. You must match DNA pairs to be able to write cards to the sequence. You can also flip cards in your hand or those already written to help you get closer to the perfect match. And there are special abilities to adjust your cards too. The first to entirely clone the sequence is the winner. Thing one, what's this game all about? While Okazaki Inc. has you and one other player trying to complete a sequence of DNA. And you're going to do this by using your handful of cards to connect pairs together so that you can write this sequence. Um, right off the bat, it's a long time since I studied biology in secondary school. Um, and I'm not fully sure that I understood the concepts that were going on here. It's possible they might be very true to biology. And if you're big into science, this might be very appealing to you. Um, but regardless, I do think that the theme and the mechanics are really well connected here. It genuinely does feel like you're matching these pairs to create something. And even if you don't fully understand all of the science bits, there's enough going on here that you can feel yourself progressing through the actions you're doing, even if you don't fully understand what they're all about. So it's still kind of fun. Now, similar games to this. Um, well, the first one that comes to mind is something like Hannah Makoji, which is another card game where you have very few cards and you're trying to basically like outwit your opponent um, to get cards in whatever way you would like. There's also kind of a hint here of something like Onitama, which is a chess-like game, but you are, get to know all of the moves. And it feels like that here too. There's a lot of open information and really the game is about outwitting your opponent. Thing two, what kind of actions are you going to be performing on your turn? So Okazaki Inc. is definitely a hand management style of game where you're trying to get the cards in your hand and those in play in the correct orientation so that you can use them wisely. Um, the interesting part here is that your cards are not one sided. They are in fact four ways you have to consider them. So right ways up, upside down, back to front and then upside down again. Yeah, yeah, it messes with my mind too. And at the start of your turn, you play a card, both of you do, and there'll already be a card waiting with a sequence on it. So you're going to want to match up a pair from your own hand with the one in play. If you get to match it with the color, um, you'll get a bonus, which usually involves altering your hand or altering a card you had in play, all necessary stuff. And if you manage to keep the card there matching till the end of the turn, you'll get to write it into the DNA sequence. So one step closer to victory. Um, so as you can see, this really is a game about, well, getting your hand in the right order and getting the stuff in play in the right order. And this often takes turns of planning to happen. Um, so prepare yourself for all of the dimensions. The other point here, however, is that this game does feel a little bit like a battle of wits because not only are you trying to write to your sequence, but so is your opponent. And there are ways to interfere with their plans, um, specifically really by either going first or second in the turn. Those things really matter. And you'll find that this game has lots of planning in it where you're trying to plan turns ahead just so you can stop your opponent. Because you can see what they're doing, it really does feel like, yeah, you're, you know, it's a, a battle of wits. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Um, but overall, for such a small game, there's a lot of really intelligent design choices in here. Um, and it's very, very well put together. Thing three on the table. So this game is a small one, um, but surprisingly, it's got really good table presence. And I think it's to do with the artwork of all of those DNA strands. And when you see them all laid out and all connecting up together, yeah, it's quite enchanting. Um, now, the advantage of being a small game is that it's pretty much instantaneous to set up and put away. 
and it doesn't take up too much space on the table either it's very very tidy so that also makes it portable which is why I assume you might want a small game in the first place um, now so it takes about 20 minutes for two of us to play and this is a game for one to two players only the rule book, um, so there's a bit of a rule book that's in the game itself when you open it up, um, but it also has a link to a website with a full rule book and you're definitely going to need that. And that full rule book isn't the best either. Um, there's still some things I'm not sure we're playing entirely correctly. Um, I do think once you get going with this, it's good, but that initial how things fit together, especially because you're thinking of cards four different ways around, is hard to wrap your head around. Now, replayability wise, well, there's lots here. And I think that's mostly because this game feels very much like you're using these cards to play your opponent. Um, and that gives you lots of longevity. Thing four, how does this game look and feel? Well, I've not really had much experience with wallet games before, but this is my first attempt. Um, and what I will note is that I love the packaging that this came in. Um, it came first in a lovely cloth bag, and then inside of that, it's in like an, a wrapper that you unfurl each time. Um, and it really feels like opening a present whenever you decide to play the game. I like that a lot. I do think it's a shame that the cover art is very business, business, business. It looks very kind of bland and then when you get inside you have these cool cards that really look like blackboards to me or chalkboards um, and I like that idea of tying it with science that maybe you were learning something but also the idea of unfolding of kind of unfinished ideas um, I thought that was really really cool component quality wise you get a, a lovely double helix as the start player marker which I think is cute and the card quality is lovely as well Overall, I think from the outside, this game is really unassuming, but it's got a lot of appeal upon the reveal. Thing five, is this game actually any good? So let me start off by telling you that Okazaki Inc. is probably one of the most ingenious and well thought out games I've seen in a while. This is a game that consists of entirely identical cards. And yet there is a way here to make a game out of that. It's fascinating that your opening hand is both how you score, but also how you find ways to score. Um, and manipulating all of this um, is a thought process. This is a game that requires you to do quite a bit of thinking and quite a bit of planning. And not just about your own stuff, but about your opponents. Because at the end of the day, this is essentially a race game. Because the game ends once somebody has matched all of those sequences. Um, and so you're going to find yourself doing things like playing a card you didn't want to play just to prevent your opponent from getting something. And it's also very vital who goes first and who goes second. Because those abilities can really change everything that's going on. So we're back to the whole planning point again. Um, and this brings me, I suppose, to the level of difficulty that's available here in the game. And I think that's entirely dictated to by who you're going to play with. Um, you know, my partner is the person who can plan multiple turns ahead. So I find it very hard to wrap my head around A, what he was doing, but then B, you know, how I was being prevented from progressing. Um, but I think that had I played with somebody different, I would have had a much more, a much different experience. And it just proves to me that this game really is about a uh, battle of the minds um, through this card game. Um, and I think that will appeal to a lot of people, even if not so much to me. Um, overall though, I had a lot of fun with this. I think it, it's interesting, it's cool, it's engaging. Yeah, I found it difficult, but that's just the way my brain works. And I think if you want a small game with big gameplay, um, you really should look at this one. So do I think you should have Okazaki Inc. in your collection? Well, if you're looking for some small and quick strategy, then this one is pretty exceptional. You've been watching Board Game Inquisition. Please like or subscribe to the channel so you can get updates about my future videos. Or if you have any comments or queries you'd like to make about Okazaki Inc, why not shout them off in the comment box below. So tune in again for some more short and informative board game reviews.